This is an ejection seat from the late 1940s. This is an ejection seat from the late 1970s. In that 30 year span, we saw an incredible increase in the technology, reliability and safety of high speed escape systems. And we're gonna tell you this story in Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat. If you see or hear these words, in a military aircraft, you are gonna be out of that airplane in seconds. And this brings us to a new series on escape systems. Part one will be ejection seats, escape capsules in part two, and part three will be rocket sleds. We'll be bringing these to you in the coming weeks. But let's begin with part one, ejection seat technology. Now, I've had the privilege of flying in many military aircraft, and I've been asked uh, over the years if I'd ever ejected uh, during any of my flights with the Air Force, NASA, Coast Guard, or LA County Sheriff. And the answer has been no, although I've known many people who have ejected from airplanes and had some incredible stories to tell. The closest I ever got was a training rail at Naval Air Station, Norfolk, Virginia, qualifying to fly in the F-14 Tomcat and riding a Martin Baker seat up the rail. But let's go back to the beginning of the story. Bailing out of airplanes in the 1920s and 30s involved opening a canopy, opening a door, uh, if it was an open cockpit airplane, stepping over the side, uh, leaping off the wing, and pulling the ripcord and hanging under a parachute and coming down for a landing. It was just that simple. With the advent of high-performance airplanes in World War II, bailing out became more difficult. Uh, aerodynamic forces, G-loads, uh, the wind blast uh, became uh, really challenging, and so a lot of uh, bailouts were not successful. And this required a new technology. In 19, early 1940s, German technology solved that problem with the first ejection seats. They used compressed air to fire the seat out of the airplane and up and over the tail. Later versions used in the jet Heinkel HE 162 or rocket powered Messerschmitt ME 163 that you see here used gunpowder charges to blow the seat out of the airplane. It was a very abrupt acceleration, usually resulting in pilot injury, and uh, the reliability was uh, fair at best, but it was the beginning of the story. That story evolved in Great Britain after the war. Uh, the gentleman that you see on the right wearing the hat is Sir James Martin, and he is the Martin of Martin Baker. Valentine Baker was a British pilot lost in an accident, and James Martin made it his uh, pledge uh, to dedicate his career and his company to saving pilots' lives. And the Martin Baker seats are unlike any other. Uh, they pioneered ejection seat technology and are still in use today all over the world, and we're gonna talk quite a bit about that in a few moments. Martin Baker fired the first ejection seats out of a Gloucester Meteor, uh, although this is a later airplane with a much later seat uh, in this photo, but that began the Martin Baker uh, story. The first live ejection of a human subject out of an airplane in the United States uh, was from this airplane, a Northrop P-61 Black Widow, uh, adeptly named Jack in the Box. Manual bailouts had been the solution uh, here we see a Navy Douglas F3D Sky Knight uh, with a uh, escape chute as the pilot subject or test subject uh, comes down the chute. And this is a test at El Centro Naval Air Station in Southern California, uh, demonstrating the escape chute used in both the F3D and the A3D Sky Warrior. Early seats were fairly primitive. As I mentioned, the reliability was not that great. Uh, but they were able to eject the pilots out of high-speed airplanes. And this was the beginning, these kind of uh, contraption looking devices uh, that were used to save pilots' lives. By the mid-1950s, seat technology was advancing. And here we see the patent drawing of a Republic seat used in the F-84 Thunderstreak and RF-84 Thunder Flash, as you see here. That seat evolved to rocket power uh, in the F-105 Thunder Chief. In this composite photo, we see the rocket seat firing. Uh, and this was the first production seat to achieve a speed of less than three seconds from the time the pilot pulled the handle until he was hanging under a full 20 foot canopy parachute. Let's take a closer look at the F-105 seat. 
Here we see it as it would look in the cockpit with the airplane in flight. And here's a different view showing the leg restraint, keeping the legs from flailing uh, during an ejection. And here's the seat in the ejection firing position. The pilot pulls up on the armrests and that uh, encloses his arms and hips uh, and then provides protection. Uh, an, it's not able to be seen in this photo, but behind the shoulder straps are other straps that become the seat man separator. Uh, they are slack during flight, then they tighten and uh, propel the pilot out of the seat during the ejection sequence. The box that you see open at the upper right is a chaff dispenser. Uh, upon ejection, this opens and releases a cloud of uh, aluminum strips, which heightens the radar signature for rescue attempts uh, after the pilot ejects. This is the survival pack that's uh, contained in the seat of the uh, ejection seat. And uh, the device that's sticking up on the left is the, uh, what they call the green apple. That is the uh, uh, actuator for the emergency oxygen bottle. And then uh, the seat contains a life raft, all sorts of survival equipment. And as I said, the emergency oxygen bottle provides 10 minutes of oxygen should the pilot uh, have to bail out at high altitude. In the 1950s, pilots wore their parachutes, and this was connected to the seat. Uh, it was either opened automatically or manually uh, with the uh, D-ring. Uh, but the later seats uh, in the 70s involved a harness that you see I'm wearing here, uh, used in the ACES-2 seat in the F-15. We would mentioned Martin Baker. And let's take a look at uh, that technology. Martin Baker ejection seats were adapted by the US Navy in the 1950s because of their reliability and excellent performance at low altitude, which was the do domain of Navy pilots near the aircraft carriers that they operated from. The Mark V seat was used in the Vought F-8 Crusader seen in this uh, Ravel model box top by George Akimoto. And there was a Mark V seat and a Mark VII seat out of an F-4 Phantom on display at the Museum of Flying in Santa Monica, California. This was a brilliant display. It was actually a selfie station for museum visitors. They were allowed to sit in the Mark V seat and have their pictures taken with a pilot figure. But on that seat is a photograph. And uh, this brings us to a story that is the most well-documented ejection probably ever filmed. The occasion was uh, the USS Franklin D. Roosevelt where a Navy photo crew had been aboard documenting landings. And on this particular day, October 21st, 1961, a Vought F-8 Crusader from the Red Rippers flown by Lieutenant Junior Grade John Terry Cryway was landing in very rough seas. The pitching deck uh, came up just as the airplane uh, landed and it uh, broke the right main gear. Uh, that ruptured a fuel line and the magnesium strut ignited and now you had a real problem. Although the hook uh, got the three wire, uh, it uh, was torn off in the torsional load when the gear collapsed. And now you had what is called a bolter where the airplane is literally just heading down the deck. The engine was flaming out and now he had no way to either fly or stop. And this all is in the space of less than three seconds. But here you see Cryway reaching up for the handles to eject. The canopy is being jettisoned. The airplane is descending into the ocean. The seat is out. The ejection sequence is underway chute is uh, streaming out. And believe it or not, pilot survived. He was rescued by a helicopter moments after this photo was taken. And his sole injury was a small abrasion on his neck from one of the straps. As you can imagine, Martin Baker used this photo in uh, magazine ads and all different media for many years, uh, showing the reliability of the seat, but it doesn't get any more dramatic than that. Well, we're gonna go from the ocean to the desert. This is the Douglas X-3 Stiletto, a research airplane from the early 1950s. And now it's time for a pop quiz. What does the X-3 Stiletto have in common with the Lockheed F-104 Starfighter, other than the shape of its wing? Well, if you guessed downward firing ejection seat, you were right. And the idea behind this was that it would solve the problem of having to get the pilot up over the tail of the airplane when the airplane was supersonic. It was good in theory and great at altitude, but at low altitudes or on takeoff, it was a real problem. 
Another airplane that had a downward firing ejection seat was the Boeing B-47 Stratojet. The Navigator Bombardier seat fired downward, as you see in this test. The pilot and co-pilot seats fired upward. But in addition to ejecting, the co-pilot seat rotated 180 degrees on the turntable that you see here, uh, because on the early models of the B-47, the co-pilot also served as the tail gunner. Quite a complex piece of equipment. Here's another complex piece of equipment 10 years later. This is a seat developed for a very high speed, very high altitude airplane. If you guess the X-15, you're correct. And why would the X-15 go with an ejection seat as opposed to a pod or a capsule? We're gonna actually address that in more detail in the following episode. But the seat uh, provided uh, a way of escape, assuming that the airplane would be the ultimate protection if a pilot got in trouble at uh, super high altitudes or hypersonic speed. And then he would ride the airplane down to lower altitude and use the seat to escape. Here's another high speed, high performance uh, Lockheed uh, ejection seat used for a secret airplane in the early 60s. The program was so secret that the, the seat could not be tested on a rocket sled at any of the known Air Force bases. So they tested the seat uh, towing a cockpit mock-up on wheels behind a 1962 Ford Thunderbird at a remote dry lake in Nevada. That seat was for the Lockheed Blackbird family. And this is the prototype YF-12 seen in this photo. And finally, I'm gonna talk about companies designing their own seats. We mentioned Republic, uh, Convair, Lockheed, North American, all designed seats for their own airplanes at that time. And Douglas got into the ejection seat business because of their activity with the Navy. In the mid fifties, 55% 55 of all carrier based aircraft were built by the Douglas Aircraft Company. And here we see the Escapac system, which was used primarily in the A4 Skyhawk and the F4D Sky Ray. And that technology evolved into what was called the ACES-2. ACES stands for Advanced Concept Ejection Seat. And this was a game changer. Developed in 1973, the ACES-2 was used in any number of airplanes later on, the B1, the F-15, the F-16, the A-10, and the F-117 Nighthawk Stealth Fighter. The Aces II was just elegant in its simplicity. Uh, you can see here the F-15 version, and you can tell because there's a notch on the seat pan uh, to clear the center stick, and the seat is actuated by side handles. In the F-16, the handle is a center pull uh, to clear the side stick of that airplane. Here's a close-up of the oxygen bottle. And this is a self-portrait. Uh, I'm flying in a uh, max performance takeoff in an F-16. But what I wanna show you here are the sensors on the seat. Uh, they're on either side of the helmet. And these sensors uh, will measure airspeed, altitude, attitude of the airplane as the seat is moving up the rail during the ejection process. And what that does is it controls uh, vernier rockets, for the Stapac gyro stabilizing system. The rockets fire for all of three tenths of a second, blink of an eye. But the Stapac system allows verniers to control the uh, CG and aerodynamic forces so that the seat is always stable during the ejection process. And finally, this is a MiG-29. I think you know where I'm going with this story. The Zvezda K-36D uh, used in the MiG-29 had been demonstrated uh, at altitudes up to 85,000 feet, speeds in excess of Mach 2 with the pilot wearing a full pressure suit. But it became world famous in 1989 at the Paris Air Show uh, at only 300 feet when uh, Russian pilot Anatoly Kovacher ejected uh, when the airplane had lost an engine and was heading literally straight down to the ground. He got out of the airplane at 300 feet and his chute opened 15 feet above the ground. Other than a hard landing, he was uninjured. But that compelling photo seen on the cover of Aviation Week uh, did more for Russian uh, seat technology advertising and promotion than anything ever could have done. A perfect ending to an amazing story of high-speed escape system technology. 
And again, if you see or hear these words in a military airplane, you are going to be out very shortly. And there you have it, the story of high-speed escape systems, part one on ejection seats. Thank you for celebrating aviation with Mike Machat. All photos courtesy of the Wings and Air Power Historical Archive. Until next time, take care.